Kenneth Stamp has a book called The Causes of the American Civil War, and on page one announces that according to all latest historical conjecture and observation, no cause for the American Civil War is known. I recommend you have a look at that book. It's a strange book. <laughs> he, it's a series of st st uh, people contributing. There's an anthropologist who points out that had there been no blacks in the South, the war would have taken place anyway. They had nothing to do with the war. One of the, this relates now to the matter of separatism and the tendency to decentralize under electric conditions. Uh, today, separatism, whether psychic or social, private or corporate, separatism is a very familiar experience. And the, I, when Quebec began its attempts at separat, separatism, I looked up the, the, the history of the American Civil War on this very point to find out why did the South want out of the Union? And that's why I was somewhat uh, s staggered to discover that historians are unable to announce or to pronounce any particular reason. They think it's just very bad luck. Some very miserable set of circumstances took place, but that nothing was gained by the Civil War by anybody. However, the same could be said about Quebec today. On the other hand, one very obvious feature both about Quebec and about the American South is that they are both oral cultures and in a state of very uneasy alliance with the left hemisphere culture of the North on the one hand and of English Canada on the other. English Canada is a left hemisphere part of the world and uh, Quebec is right hemisphere. Quebec is oral like the Irish. The Irish and the English. The Irish are a very acoustic culture and very ill at ease with the highly quantified materialistic English and have been struggling with them for many centuries. The South was an acoustic area, still is. That's where all the jazz and rock come from. Jazz and rock are acoustic events which cannot take place in, or cannot originate in non-acoustic or non-oral cultures. It's a strange matter which has not really been studied, but the fact that all jazz and rock come out of the oral culture of the South with its strange Elizabethan language and traditions of speech is certainly a, a worth studying in our TV age. The oral cultures tend to be group oriented as compared with the highly individualistic orientation of the left hemisphere and visual cultures. In the period of the Civil War, the big electric event that was dawning on the world was the telegraph. The telegraph had become commercial by about 1840 and had a profound effect on news gathering and news reporting and may well have been one of the causes of awakening southern impulses by resonance at this simultaneous acoustic kind. One of the peculiar results of the telegraph was that it was simultaneous with the development of symbolism, uh, which is a figure ground pattern problem. And Edgar Allan Poe, one of the key figures in the origins of symbolism and of great influence on Baudelaire and Europe was very much aware of the technology of his time. In fact, in his famous story of the Maelstrom, he uh, 
insisted that art made possible survival by pattern recognition. His, in the story of the Maelstrom, his sailor caught in a great whirlpool while out fishing began to study this vast thing in which he was caught and he noticed that some things disappeared downward and other things reappeared and came up. And he attached himself to one of these reappearing objects and survived. And this is the allegory that Poe presents to the world of the function of art in society, the function of pattern recognition, and the function of anticipating effects with causes. Um, Poe invented the detective story and as well as symbolism, and I think the two are related because the detective story is a form in which the figure and the ground are deeply interrelated and the detective typically studies the hidden ground rather than the isolated figure. The figure of the corpse or the victim, he relates to a hidden ground of events which in turn illuminate the figure. Kierkegaard also very conscious of the telegraph as a revolution in his time, Kierkegaard rebelled against the Cartesian lineality of the philosophers of his time and against Hegel. Discontinuity is acoustic. Continuity, connectedness, is visual and left hemisphere. Discontinuity, which is electric, electric currents do not flow in the way that water does through a pipe or a wire. That is not the form in which they exist. And the telegraph had not been around very long before we had a revolution in physics. Max Planck in 1900 came up with the new model of awareness of matter as discontinuous quanta of energy. Matter was not, in his idea, connected at all. There were rather resonant, resonating intervals in matter, or among, among these quanta. In the same year that Planck came forward with his quantum theory, Freud came forward with his discontinuity between consciousness and the unconscious. And in the same year, Picasso, with his discontinuous spaces called cubism, later called cubism, originally called multi, multi-faceted space. And of course, Einstein pushed that on into relating the form and structure of things to the speed of light. The relativity theory refers to the fact that if you are to measure anything, in this world, you have to measure it against the speed of light. Stein, and then, of course, many others, Wyndham Lewis, Joyce Pound Elliott, all moved into this new symbolist world of discontinuity.